to begin. Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good coffee break. My name is Marcus Wallam. It's a pleasure to be your moderator for the last session of today. We have four very interesting speakers lined up. So without further ado, uh, the first speaker is Jeremy Garafel from Space Bell. Jeremy is a space systems engineer working on the development of mission and control centers. He's been involved in the architecture and implementation of the cybersecurity proof of concept for a prober control center based on the implementation of the CCSDS space data link security protocol and using the European ground systems common core. In particular, Jeremy worked on the interface with SciSec, ARCA, and on the validation of the project. So Jeremy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So yes, the project I'm going to present um, is a demonstrator of using the SDLS trend out uh, to secure CCSDS frames uh, on the European Grand Segment Common Core, EGSCC. So this project was done by, uh, so I'm from Space Bell, so it was done by uh, Benoit and Pierre with me, but it was also in partnership with SISEC, uh, with Emna and uh, Luca, and also with uh, Isa, with Ignacio and uh, Giacomo. Giacomo. So first, a little bit of history about Space Bell, of course. Um, so we are doing mainly two things, so space systems and software engineering. So that's uh, mostly doing ground segments, um, for when, especially when for mission critical applications. And uh, clients in this sector are mostly major space companies in Europe. Um, our second market is uh, Earth, uh, Earth observation services. Uh, where clients this time are more uh, regional governments uh, or public users. And so we do monitoring solutions or uh, environment uh, management, things like that. Uh, in all of our softwares, we are usually, uh, we'll usually, usually there from architecture to maintenance, so from the beginning to the very end. Um, and we've been active for more than 30 years, which uh, we've already finished more than 45 missions with 13 million euro in sales every year. Uh, the vast majority of which are export. Uh, we're present in Liège and Brussels in Belgium, also in Toulouse in France, and then we're also present in Poland. Um, and since 2015, we're ISO certified for quality management services. Um, we've also worked on all of the PROBA missions so far. So PROBA 1 was an uh, Earth observation satellite that was supposed to be active for two years, but it's, it's still active today after more than 20 years. It was the longest Earth observation mission from uh, ESA. It, it wasn't, it, w it is. Um, so then there was also PROBA2. Uh, this time it's um, a solar observation satellite, which is also still active today. Uh, PROBA veg Vegetation, which lasted, I think, between two and five years. Um, it's not active anymore, but it did its mission. And this one is to monitor, it's also Earth observation. It's to monitor vegetation level uh, on Earth, and it covers the entire globe in three days. Um, then a mission that's supposed to be launched next year, uh, it's PROBA3, so it's two satellites to observe the, the solar corona um, with one of the satellites uh, acting as an occulter. Uh, and it's also a sat uh, mission that uh, will do formation flying for the first time, at close distance at least. Um, and then lastly, we have launching in two years, I think, uh, Proba Altius, which is also an Earth observation satellite uh, to sound the atmosphere looking at bright limbs. So Proba, the A in Proba is for autonomy, so it's a lot of automation is going behind it. Um, sorry. So we automate everything uh, from planning to the actual path. So the entire path is uh, entirely automated with no action from uh, any operator. And to do this, we have the workflow engine. That's a project that was developed by Spacebell. Um, and that's a project that can we can plan basically a lot of different, each box in a, in a workflow will represent an action. And this action can be a Python script, a Bash script, uh, a Groovy script, anything you want. Um, in the case of this project, uh, so we have one workflow for now, we will have multiple afterwards, uh, that have different procedures that are in Python in Groovy. Um, the, Groovy the Groovy scripts are to interact with uh, GSCC. Um, to read TMs, so telemetry, or to send TC telecommands. Uh, unfortunately, as of now, uh, as of before this project, uh, EGSCC does not secure the, the TM and the TC link, so there is no authentication or no uh, encryption. So for this, we, we use the SDLS standard, uh, which is a standard uh, 
that is to be applied to CCDS, CCSDS frames, which is uh, what's used in EGSCC. Um, so if we look at the entire CCSDS protocol, we intervene at the uh, level really of the TM and the TCs. And that means that uh, looking at the entire infrastructure, infrastructure um, the entire link between the moment uh, uh, a TC will leave the antenna and uh, and uh, get to the satellites, the, the entire communication is uh, encrypted and then uh, and vice versa for, for telemetry. So looking at a frame in the CCSDS protocol, uh, we can see on, on top uh, that we have every time we have a header, then we have the frame data, which can be any byte you want, and then we have a trailer. And then using SDLS, we add on top of that, we have a security header and security, security trailer, which is added uh, in the content of the frame. So we do not touch uh, the header or the trailer, we just add content into the data. Um, for the architecture of this, uh, of this implementation, so we have defined three different layers. The most important one would be the generic layer, that's really where S uh, SDLS is implemented. Uh, so it contains all of the logic to uh, to encrypt the frame, uh, decrypt the frame, to to do some key management. Um, then we have uh, an ARCA integration layer, which uses an uh, so it communicates with an, with an ARCA server to do authentication and uh, encryption, but also key management. And last but last not least, we have the EGSCC integration layer, which communicates. Uh, with EGSCC, so it integrates the library, the SDLS uh, library into EGSCC. Um, fortunately, EGSCC of offers an extension mechanism to uh, add cryptography in it, um, so integration is uh, in principle very easy. Um, so this also means because we have three distinct layers that we could reuse this project uh, outside of EGSCC, so in a different uh, ground segment, but also with a different uh, encryption appliance or with an updated ARCA, for instance. So for the prototype that we have, first, if we want to do only authentication, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have we add security header and a security trailer in the frame, so into the into the data of the frame itself. Uh, so the trailer, the header, sorry, in this case will include uh, uh, an anti-replay sequence number that's incremented at every communication, and then the trailer uh, contains the uh, the max, so the authentication tag. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so the and the authentic authentication itself is done on the entire frame, starting from the header to uh, be before the trailer. Um, if we want to do encryption, it's basically the same principle, except that instead of a se sequence number, we use no uh, an initialization vector. Um, and no, the frame instead of being, so the frame data, instead of being clear, it's completely encrypted, so completely unreadable. Uh, and looking at the entire architecture of the, of the prototype, uh, we can see here how we integrated ARCA. So for the ground segment, we have ARCA uh, that's uh, on the server and we communicate directly with it. And then, because this is a demonstrator, we don't have a satellite to communicate with, but we communicate with a simulator. And this simulator uses not an ARCA server, but an uh, uh, ARCA on cloud, so it's a Docker container that provides the same service. Um, and then for to, to configure all of these security, we have security associations. So each of the frame that is sent in CCSDS is sent on a specific uh, virtual channel ID and on a specific map ID. Uh, and we associate with that, s it's a security association, so we associate an ID, uh, security association ID. Um, and each security association also has uh, associated encryption key, authentication key, then the initialization, initialization vector that I mentioned earlier, or the sequence number, depending on authentication or encryption. Um, and then if you look at the life of a uh, security association, if we start, we have basically nothing. Then when we create one, we, we need to associate uh, each of the four parameters I mentioned just above. Then we can rekey a security association uh, by specifying that we want these, uh, for instance, uh, encryption key ID to be associated with the security association. And then uh, what's left to do is start the security association. And when, when it started, we can safely uh, send TC that are uh, secured or get DMs that are secured. Uh, and so there is all of the reverse procedure to stop a security association, expire it, or, uh, or delete it. 
um, to deal with the, the security association, we need to be able to communicate specifically on this uh, with the satellite. So we use extended procedures. Uh, so there is the security association management service that I mentioned on the previous slide, but there is also the key management service. Uh, but in the scope of this project, we only used key activation with deactivation. So all of the key we use are preloaded, uh, both on the simulator and in the in the ground segment. And to exchange this uh, extended procedure, we so this is in the SDLS standard is defined as a, as a PDU. Uh, we decided to use a plus uh, uh, so a TC plus eight one, uh, which is usually used to exchange uh, function. Uh, a function and then the function value. So what we did here is that the function ID that we usually uh, that we use is the tag of the extended procedure, and then the remainder of the extended procedure is put into the function uh, value. So this way we can use pus. Uh, we can use the pus standard that's uh, easily understandable by any simulator or satellite that we use, uh, at least with the CCSDS standard, and exchange our extended procedures. And now for the the real show, it's a demonstration that hopefully should work. Um, so what we have here, first we have our workflow engine. Um, so this is the space belt project I was talking about. And we can open, if it works, I swear it was working five minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Plus connection. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Yes, we can open any template, so any workflow that we, we have defined before, workflow that can be created directly into the workflow engine. Uh, and here we have one, so it's, uh, it's a demonstrator for, for, this, uh, for this project. So if I launch it right now, the first, the first step that it does is uh, it's opens, it opens uh, an SLA link between the ground segment, so between EGSCC and the simulator of the satellite. Um, so we can see here that it was successfully done. So the satellite and the and EGSCC can start to communicate. Uh, so then if I start the next action, what we do here is the first action is we start some rekeying. So the rekeying, it means that in this case, we, we want to start the security association that, uh, that deals with the downlink. So the satellite is, uh, in this case, the simulator, but the satellite doesn't know that we want to start uh, him the Basically, we want to tell the satellite that it can start sending TMs, but in a secure fashion. So here we are saying, okay, uh, we have security association four with such uh, such authentication key ID, encryption key ID, and initialization initialization vector. And at the same time, in parallel, we do the same. Uh, we do the same on the ground segment because if we are not synced. Uh, the if the ground segment thinks we are, we are encrypted and not the satellite, of course, nothing will work. Um, so we can see yes, that this worked as well. Um, then here we, we start the security association. And while that's doing uh, its job, I can show you here. So this is uh, the web interface of EGSCC. And we can see here that we have two activities that have, uh, that have been done. Uh, and this is the two activities sent to the simulator. So this is the rekeying and starting the downlink, the downlink security association. So because this is done, we can now send a uh, TC to the satellite. That's first, let's just try a TC that's uh, that's unsecured. So it's a classic TC. It's just a connection test, so it's just a ping. Um, so sending the TC, we can see it is, it's this one. So the the workflow engine sent uh, the information to GSCC to send this TC. Um, yes, it takes a little while because the simulator doesn't rep respond immediately. Um, Okay, and when that's done, the next activity, here I'm starting activities manually, but usually in a, it's a workflow, so everything should be done in one go. It's just so I can manage the time. 
Um, and here then we can see we have a log. Uh, so it's a log of the, usually in operations you would never do that, but we have a co we use a mechanism in GSEC to print every frame that's sent. Uh, so we can just see that the clear TC looks like this. That's the, f the entire CCSDS frame, by the way. And if we go back to the web interface, we can see in the whole data log uh, that we have nothing. So what you should see here is that we got um, a TM back from the satellite, a TM uh, one, uh, 117, to say that, okay, it acknowledged the, the TC and it, uh, it basically responds to the ping. Um, and then we can do the same thing with uh, authentication, for instance. So let's start it. I see we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to skip the verification part and go look directly at uh, what the frame actually was. Yes, here it is. So if we compare the two frames, then we can see that the second one is a lot longer. And actually, we can see that the packet, so the data of the frame looks like a little bit like this, which we can find back uh, somewhere here in the first frame that's sent in clear. And in the second one, we can still find it. It's just uh, a little bit further. Uh, yes, it's here, because we have the security header in front. And then we can see the frame is still uh, bigger in, the in its hand, because we have the authentication tag that's added. And then lastly, if I send uh, if I send the TC that's encrypted, yes. Once again, let's start and look directly at what it sent. Yes. Yes, we can see that it looks a little bit like the one above, except that where we should see the packets. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the. Um, it's not a sequence number anymore, it's the, initi the initialization vector, so it's a bit longer in the header, but then the packet itself is completely, uh, uh, it's not recognizable uh, when we look at uh, the two process frames. Um, yes, and the whole data logs are still not here. <laughs> okay, I will conclude the demo here then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Jeremy, and very brave to do a live demo. Any uh, questions in the room to start with? I don't see anything immediately online. We don't have anything at the moment. So maybe one from me. The the, the SISEC uh, Arca integration. So this is acting as a hardware security module, is it? So it's providing all the crypto primitives and almost like a key management facility that you're then operating on with the SDLS operations exactly. and feeding it back to the control system. Okay. Yes, and that's, so in the long term, uh, I believe SciSec has something to put, so here we use, a, for the simulator, we use a Docker container, but SciSec has something to put directly into the satellite for the long term, but there's a presentation on that tomorrow. Okay, very good. So this is kind of modular, it could be also uh, anything that provides that function, set of security primitives to the EGFCC yes. component. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Yes, one question in the room. Thank you. Um, do you have any comments regarding uh, key management? Because that's an aspect which uh, Space Starlink Security Protocol leaves quite open to uh, interpretation. They write something about um, just upload 10 keys and then switch. Um, have you um, worked on that or have, have you any more thought about it? We haven't worked on it because very early in the project it became clear that it was completely out of the scope. Um, we had another project that was supposed to start and, and be applied on that, but it was cancelled. So, um, But no, indeed, it would just be to upload the key, also in, ex in an extended procedure. Uh, and of course, because we can use any security association we want, we would probably use a, an encrypted one to send the keys, uh, <laughs> I guess. But we haven't given it more, more thought uh, or made any architecture for that. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Yes. On the JSCC, do you measure uh, any performance issue on the telecommand link or uh, any impact? You mean because we go through uh, a quick, quick photography uh, 
server and then we could have yep. latency added. No, because especially here because we just send a ping and then we wait for the ping to return, so there's no no criticality. Uh, but even though I think the Arca server is perfectly capable to handle the, the bandwidth that we need, uh, because it's not that high to be honest. Um, yes, and I, that's also your question. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Any other question for Jeremy? Maybe just uh, one remark on the, on the first question of the of the key management best practices. Of course, the the implementation uh, normative standard is the blue book, but in CCSDS there's also a uh, green uh, green book, uh, which elaborates to some extent on on the topic. But uh, yeah. any other question before we wrap up? We still have a good few minutes. If not, then Jeremy, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.